Father, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. And Lord, we worship you. In the beauty of your holiness, we well, thank you, Father, because you knew we'll be here even before the foundation of the earth. Thank you, Lord Jehovah, for your great calling upon our lives, O oh God. Lord, I worship you, and Lord, I adore you. I glorify your name. Lord, we are ready for you. We say yes, Lord, to every instruction. We say yes, Lord, to every admonition. We say yes, Lord, Father, Lord, to every, every, every scolding this morning. We just bless and exalt your name. Hallowed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. This is Positive Influence Family Outreach Ministry. I'm Reverend Olufola K.E.K. I'm the senior pastor here at Pifon Houston and we'll worship on Sundays at 11 a.m., Fridays and Wednesdays by 6 p.m. Central Time at 8502 Cambridge Street, Houston, Texas 77054. And we are in our fasting season. We started our 40 day fast November 1st and we are ending December the 10th. And this happens to be the second 40 day fast this year. We usually have two 40 day fasts in every year. And God has always proven himself to be great, to be gracious, to be glorious, to be faithful, to be our God. I want to salute everyone that has been part of this fasting. I love you, Nigeria. I love you so much. I thank you for those that have been fasting here in the U.S. I bless the name of the Lord and I celebrate you. I celebrate God on your behalf. I want to thank God because God has been faithful. Today is day 36 of our 40 day fast and we have four more days to go. If you have not been part of this fasting, you can still hop on. It is not those that started that usually win sometimes. As long as you do it with all your heart and you're committed to it, God is committed to whatever you're committed to. Amen. The Bible makes us to know that when we fast, it is say if we will fast. The Bible says that things that do not go except when you fast and when you pray and we have chosen to walk this route because we do not want to leave any stone unturned don't stay in your situation and be crying and be looking for sympathy and blaming people and expecting people to help you when you do not want to take the bull by the horn i am tired of being a specimen of pity i don't want to be pitied i want to be i want people to see god in my life i want them to see his glory i want them to see his power i want them to see that god will never forsake his own and so whatever it takes to get there i'll do it whatever god says i should do i will do it I know that trying times, some of us are going through our trials and temptations, but the thing is, we know that at the end of it all, God is going to show himself mighty. He's going to show forth his glory. I know some of us are going through our little beginnings, and the Bible says, even though your beginning be small, your latter hand should greatly increase. So we know that we are going to increase. We know the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. We know we are increasing. We know we are moving forward. As long as we do not sit down you know, and watch our field and let the, the walls come down and the thorns and thistle grow on them, as long as we are up and doing and taking care of the field that God has given to us. We know it is not our effort that's going to bring the results. We know it is not by might or by power, but by the spirit of the living God. But we know, we know that God just wants us to show up. Not showing up is the issue. You need to show up. 
and let God know I am serious about this thing I'm talking about. I need you to come through for me. And God is always asking, so what will you do? Or what do you have? You don't want to sleep through the night and the day and expect God to do stuff for you. You don't pay God. God is not your servant and is not under any obligation to do nothing for you. So all we need is God show us your mercy. Lord, do something new in our lives, oh Lord. And God is saying, and I'm asking again, what are you willing to do? What sacrifice are you willing to make? And that's what God is asking today. What are you, how far are you willing to go with God? Will you say yes, Lord, to his commandments? In this fasting season, we've been praying for our hearts. The Lord will help us to be willing and obedient so we can eat the good of the land. That God will help us to obey his word. God will help us to say yes even when it's not convenient. God will help us to serve Him in spirit and in truth. As I speak to you, I speak to myself. I need the grace of God. That's why I said I covet your prayers. Keep praying for me. I don't want to be a signboard. I don't want to be showing people the way. And then you keep passing and keep seeing me. And God forbid, I'm not going to be anybody's signboard. <laughs> I will show you the way and go in with you. I'm not going to lead people out of Egypt and not enter the promised land. No, I won't do that. And so I keep praying, God, just help me. Shut doors that, have not, that you did not open. Shut doors that I opened by myself, Lord. Shut them up in the name of Jesus. And just open the doors that are meant to go in. Doors of opportunities. I know it's going to dress itself in what coats. I'm willing to do the job. Are you willing to do the job? God is a faithful God. And he's just looking for those who are willing and loyal and faithful and dependable. No people will start and they will not finish. No people who will take offense for nothing just because they don't want to take responsibility. Not people who want to be in the blame game. Not people who will use guilt as an excuse to run away. God is looking for those who will say, if I perish, I perish, like Esther did. But I will still go and see the king. All I need is God to arm me and I will fast and will pray and I will appear. I will show up. They could have prayed. Esther could have been praying in her chambers, believing that her Hasiras will receive a revelation. No, she showed up. Sometimes we need to show up. Let's just be led by the Spirit of the living God. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but this morning, I have a burden in my heart. It just feels like, you know, I don't have that much time and I want to get everything into your system. I want you to know that God is able. All things are possible, part two. We're reading from my book, Comito Smile. I know you might have heard three lies of the devil concerning receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The first one is that the gift of the Holy Spirit is not for everyone. Have you heard that? That the gift of the Holy Spirit is not for everyone. That's the lie from the pit of hell. The Bible told us that we, can, we should edify our spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost, Jude 1.20. So if the devil tells you that you don't have that gift, what he's saying is, don't worry, let your spirit be down. It doesn't need lifting. It doesn't need to be edified. Don't, don't mind those church people. It's not for you. 
You don't need to have it. It's the lie of the devil. And I'm here to tell you that the gift of the Holy Ghost is for you to edify yourself. When you pray in tongues, sometimes you do not know what to pray for as you ought to. According to Romans 8, 26, and the, but the Spirit helps your infirmity with groans that it words that you can alter with, your, with ordinary words. The Holy Ghost, you need Him and you need to pray in the Spirit. The first lie is that the gift is not for everyone. The Bible says that the promise of the Holy Spirit is for every believer. Acts 2, 39. Mark 16, 16 to 17, it is for you. This sign will follow those that believe. If you're a believer, you will speak in new tongues. The second lie is that only the apostles can pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. I have personally heard that. I want to remind you that Paul, who was Saul, was baptized in the Holy Ghost by Ananias, who was not an apostle. So even in the days of the apostles, baptism of the Holy Ghost came on, down on people who were not, through people who were not apostles. Ananias, if you read Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And the third lie, is that you must wait or tarry to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You must stay like seven years and then you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost that you already have inside of you at new birth. Paul was surprised that the Ephesian believers were not baptized in Acts 19, 1 to 2. Why do you need to wait for a gift that is already given to you? You only need to receive it. You need not get to a church building to receive this power. You are the church. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, you can pray and receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost by faith. Just like you pray for your healing and deliverance, He dwells in you already. Just pray and ask God to baptize you with the Holy Ghost in your heart as you open your mouth by faith to begin to speak in other tongues. Keep rolling those words out and silence the reasons in your mind why you shouldn't and why you're faking and why you shouldn't do it. You are not baptized in the Holy Ghost today, but before I pray with you, you have not come to know the Lord. You're not born again yet. You've not received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. He is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that Word was God. That's Jesus. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and nothing was made that was made that wasn't made through Him. He made all things. And when Adam fell, Jesus, who was already slain before the foundation of the earth, stepped in and redeemed us. He took your place even before you were born. Isn't that beautiful? And he said, let all the punishments that she would have borne or he would have borne, let it fall on me. Let the sicknesses, let the diseases, let them fall on me. I'm going to take them all to the cross. I'm taking everything. Every pain, every tear, I'm taking everything with me. So when she's born or he's born, all she needs to do or he needs to do is just to confess me as Lord, receiving me to his or her heart as, my, as Lord and Savior. And he or she can just walk in the package of salvation, of sozo, of healing, of deliverance, of prosperity. You have not known him. You have not accepted him. What a great loss. But you want to make up your mind today. You say, I want to be born again for real. I want you to just go to God. And just say, dear Lord Jesus. I come to you today. 
I know I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. Come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. Help me to live a life of holiness and righteousness. Help me not to go back to my life of sin. Help me to stay on the Word of God day and night. Help me, Lord, to evangelize and to preach the Word of God. Help me, Lord, to fellowship with the brethren. Help me to pray without season. Help me to be a Christian indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. You are born again. Congratulations. Right now, you have Jesus in your heart. And because you have Jesus in your heart, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. And you have the Holy Spirit. And right now, I want you to be in the Holy Spirit. I want you baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to lift up your hands and say in the name of Jesus, feel me, Holy Spirit, baptize me in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and I pray the power of God to baptize you right now in Jesus' name. Just open up your mouth and begin to pray in the Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this beautiful day which you have made. We choose to rejoice in it. Thank you for those that have received you today to their heart. I know there are angels rejoicing in heaven because of them. Blessed be your name forevermore. God will do exploits on this earth. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I want to remind you of our yesterday's scriptures in the book of Luke chapter 17, when the disciples went to, apostles went to Jesus and said, increase our faith. And Jesus said, you already have faith. All you need to use that faith for is to tell the mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the seas. That is to say, use your little faith to get yourself into where you can get the word and your faith can increase. And I believe God that even with our prayers yesterday that we are no longer where we used to be. And today I want us to go a little bit deeper, the same chapter, Luke chapter 17. And let's go to verse 11, talking about the 10 lepers that were cleansed. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. God is passing your way today. God is passing your way today. Then has he entered a certain village. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Because they were lepers, they stood some distance away because lepers are not meant to be in the city. Lepers are not meant to be touched. So they do not infest all the people with the disease. They stood away from Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you open the eyes of understanding of your people. What is that leprosy that you have that is making you stand some distance away from Jesus? What is it that you're going through that makes you feel unworthy to partake of the goodness and the mercies of God? What is it that the enemy has told you that makes you believe that you are not worthy of God's grace and mercy. It is called leprosy. Leprosy 
represents things that stand between us and God, between us and people. Leprosy makes you feel abandoned because you never, never orchestrated it. You did not go ask for it. What are you going through that is making you not move close to people? What is it that you're going through that makes you feel you are not supposed to be in a particular assembly? What is it that you're going through that has alienated you from your family members? What is it you're going through that you, you tiptoe into the church and you, you take the back seat? What is it that you're going through? What is it? What is going on? It may not be a physical illness. It may be a psychological one or even a spiritual one. You feel so unworthy because you committed the sin. Come on. The Bible says if you confess your sin, he is faithful and he is just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. How much more shall the blood purge your conscience from dead works and serve the living God? All you need to do is come to God and say, I'm sorry. Nobody has a right to kick you out of church. Your, that's your home. That's your father's house. What is it you're going through that makes you think you cannot take that position? You can't speak well? The devil told me that. For many years, I would have preached to nobody. I'll say they won't understand my English. They won't understand my accent. What is it that is keeping you away? What do you think is your inadequacy? The Bible says the strength is made perfect in your weakness. The only time you should feel unworthy is when you think you, you are self-made. But if you're leaning on to the glory of God, you're leaning on to the power of God. When you show up, it's not you showing up. It's God showing up. What is it that is keeping you away from God? I didn't intend using the scripture. I wanted to talk about Naaman. I wanted to talk about Naaman. And let me run to Naaman. The in 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible says, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man. Like you and I, we're great people. Not because of what we have done, but because we carry Jesus. We represent him. And the Bible says, he shall be great. And so we are great. The Bible says that Naaman was a commander of of the army of the king of Syria. What a position to have. What a status to enjoy. The Bible says he was also great with his master. He was accepted or acceptable according to Amplified Version because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. And there are a lot of us that have accomplished so much. There are a lot of us that have attained to such a height that everybody believes that everything is okay with us. When they see you drive your car, they envy you. When they see your family, they wish they were you. When they get into your house, they look around and say, wow, your paycheck is, is, is something out of this world and you do not lack anything according to the estimation of human eyes. The Bible says, because by him the Lord has given victory to Syria, people respect you for what you do. They respect you for what they can see. He was also a mighty man of valor, God. But 
He was a leper. <laughs> a mighty man bought a leper. There are a lot of us that when people see us, they just assume all is well. There is nothing you're going through. Today we are praying, Father, deliver me and heal me from leprosy. They bought in my life that no one sees, but I feel the pain. I have seen a lot of couples wear and cold. They wear the same thing. You see them outside. You think everything is going on well. I have been there. But the moment they get back home, everyone to his tent, all Israel, different rooms, they stop talking. That's a box. They have a great home, but there are a lot of people we meet every day that is a disease that is ravishing them. They look so good on makeup, but there is a box. A bot. I heard a story of a man yesterday, a man that I I know pers I know very well. He's got he used to have, you know, let me not say all the things he has. Room I guess. I heard yesterday that there were a lot of police around his house and his home was for foreclosed. I said I can't believe it. I can't believe that that guy is coming to nothing. He's always been in that state, but nobody knew what was going on because he has so many cars, he has many houses. But they didn't know he was really in debt. There was a bot in his life. There's a song in Yoruba that I love. Shubon come la yemi. Amy Kofemo la Tony Law. Obato wash you born a money. Wash you born. I hear me. That is to say, there is a bot in my life that only God knows and sees. I feel the pain. Nobody sees it. Lord, I want you to heal me of this bot in my life. There are stories we can share with people. It's a bot. Because people will say, are you serious? Are you serious you're going through this? I can't believe you're going through this. And see, they're just going to pity you that time. They're going back to gossip about it. And because you know that you don't want to share it. It is leprosy. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, we come to you today. That every bot in our lives, oh God, Father, that is open to you, we ask that you heal us in the name of Jesus. I want you to go to God and begin to tell God about those bots. Those things that you cannot even share with your pastor. Those things that nobody knows. Your friends don't know. They come around you. They eat, they drink. But when it comes to that topic, you try to bail on them. I want you to begin to call on the name of the Lord. He's the God that healed the name. And he is able to heal you. He's the one that healed the ten lepers. He's able to heal you. He's able to deliver deliver you. He's able to set you free. Lord, we cry on you today that you heal every bat in our lives. Uh, we are good but Something is going on wrong. Lord, our family looks good but there are children that are not acting right. Uh, Lord, we ask, oh God, uh, that you will deliver us, oh God, this day. Lord, you will heal us from every but in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that 
all the pain and the hearts that don't make it see. I know you see it, Lord Father. And I ask, oh God, for healing, oh God. I ask for your deliverance, oh God. I ask for your mercy, Jehovah. I ask for your grace, oh Lord. I ask, oh God, Jehovah, that your power, oh Lord, we go forth, oh God, into all the dark places, Lord, in our lives, oh God, and heal every birth, every disease in people's lives, oh God. You sent your word, you healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you will heal. Lord, you will heal our land, oh God. You will heal our children, oh God. You will heal our finances, oh God. You will heal our marriages, oh God. Oh Lord, heal our world relationships, oh God. Oh, my sake, a lake, a little mama Sunday. Romosh take a lemo, sunk a lemo Sunday, a livable. Raka Zander, a lake, a little mama Sunday. Father, heal every butt in our lives. Everything that is not beautiful. Lord, we cannot be standing and sitting at the beautiful gates and Lord lay down crippled. Lord, Father, Lord, every other thing is beautiful, but this issue, but this issue, Lord, Father, like the woman with the issue of blood, Father, we come and we touch your power today. Heal us, O oh God, of this issue. Heal us of this but, O oh Lord. Cleanse us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless and exalt your name. In Jesus' name. We are prayed. The Bible says, I'm still going back to Luke 17, but let's continue with 2 Kings 5. He was a man of valor, but he was a leper. He was a man of valor, but he was a leper. He was, he was, he was the president of our school's club, but something went wrong. He went and brought a study, but he was deported. There is a great family, but there is a wayward child there. She went to school, but she could not graduate. There's a but in your life, and God sees the but. And God wants you to come to him with the but. A lot of us cover up, we rationalize, we pretend, yeah, you can do that with men, don't do it with God. God sees everything. But he needs you to come to him. That may be your own thorn in the flesh. Thou should draw you to God. But, the Syrians had gone out in bands and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Will that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria? For he would heal him of his leprosy. The revelation of how your butt will be solved is always around. In the, in the case of Naaman, he was a maid. That's why you can look down on anybody. He was a maid to the wife of Naaman, who said, if only master will go to a prophet that I know, he will be healed. I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I need instruction. I need a revelation of what to do so this bot can go away. Open your mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, send me a word. Lord, send me a word today. Lord, to know what to do. Lord, send me a word. Father, Lord, send me a word today. So I know what to do, Father Lord, to escape, oh God, this birth in my life. 
Lord, Father, Lord, I receive a revelation from you in the mighty name of Jesus to know exactly what to do in the name of Jesus, Lord. Send me a word today. Send me a word today like you did through the maid servant. Send me a word in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says a verse 4. And Naaman went in and told his king, Thos and Thos said the maid from Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of raiment. We're reading 2 Kings chapter 5, and I'm right here in 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. It said, when this letter comes to you, I will with, him, with it have sent to you my servant Naaman that you may kill him of leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he rent his coat and said, am I God to kill and to make a life? <laughs> the letter got to the wrong place. And that's why I said we should pray, Lord. For instruction. Most of the time, we always think the solution to our problem is in the high places. No. And that was the thought of the king. And that was why he wrote a letter to the king of Israel. Let's deal with ourselves king to king. Can you heal my servant? No. The solution to our box is with God Almighty. There is no man that can solve our problem but God. It will use man sometimes, but let God be the one using the man so the glory can go to God and not to man. Verse 8, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king asking, why have you rent your clothes? Let Naaman come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at Elisha's door. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought it would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leper. Now the solution came. But something stood in the way of the miracle. Pride. Oh Lord, help us. The solution to every but usually does not come in a form or in a way that you have visioned it or have envisioned or have imagined it. It will take the spirit of humility to receive your deliverance. Sometimes, God will send you to a younger person for your solution. I don't know what God is, has been saying to you, but what I know is God is still the same who heals the leper. When the crippled saw him, they started walking. Everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. He's still doing good today. But let pride or arrogance not keep you from your miracle. A lot of people don't like how the pastor spoke. Why? Because it was time for their deliverance. And the enemy said, no, I'm not going to get you saved. I'm not going to get you delivered. I will ensure that I enter your heart and cause your heart to be lifted up. I will make you get angry 
so you don't receive your healing, so you don't receive your miracle, so you don't receive your deliverance. I will make you leave that person. I will make you leave that church. I will make sure you don't, you don't, you don't survive in that prayer group. Why? Because if you stay there, your birth. Your leprosy will be healed. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I wanted to go to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I humble myself under your mighty hand, O God, Jehovah. I pray, O God, Jehovah, Lord, that I will not self-sabotage myself. Lord, I will not self-sabotage in the name of Jesus, Lord, my heart will not be lifted against those that you have sent to deliver me. Lord, I will not, Lord, swell in arrogance. Oh God, Lord, I miss you in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to stay where you want me to stay to receive my healing and to receive my deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, help me, oh God, Lord, to be where you want me to be. Lord, help me, oh God, to be humble enough, oh God, Jehovah, Lord, uh, to submit, oh God, to people, oh God, Jehovah, Lord, you have put above me. Lord, help me, oh God, Lord, Father, not to leave, oh God, Lord, where, Lord, you have asked me to wait on you. I pray, Lord Jehovah, for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord Father, for every congregant, oh God, Lord. I pray for every client, oh God, that I have. Lord, I pray, Lord, that those that mean to remain, Father, Lord, let the enemy not take them, oh God, from their position in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, for the spirit of humility. Lord, I pray that their eyes of understanding be enlightened, oh God. Lord, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation for them, Lord. Father, that will cause them to stay, oh God, and wait, oh God, on you in the name of Jesus. That will cause them not to go before, oh God, Lord, you have already arrived, oh God. That will cause them, oh God, not to depart, oh God, from the place of their restoration. That will cause them, oh God, to abide, oh God, in a place where they are healed and delivered from every leprosy. Father, I thank you, Lord. I give you all the praise. Oh Lord, I worship you. Lord, I adore you. Hallowed be your name for forevermore in jesus name we have prayed i pray that god will keep you in the place of your healing it sometimes you may not like it but stay abide let god meet you there it's a trial of faith you don't want the leprosy in the sky for you to put on your humility garment, chew your humble peel, and stay and wait on the Lord until you are delivered. I want us to run back to Luke chapter 17 and go see what happened to those lepers. The Bible says, I was reading, I started from 11. The Bible says there were lepers that stood away from Jesus. Verse 12, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself. Just like the prophet Elisha told Naaman, I don't have any, just go, go, go wash. Go wash in that pool, be lifted up and go plant, be planted in that water. Go wash in that pool. And Jesus said to the lepers, go show yourselves to the priest. He did not lay hands. Go to church. Go to your pastor. Go show yourself. Go let your pastor know what you're going through. Humble yourself. Go show what you're hiding. Go show yourself. Get humble. Go show yourself to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. The obedience, the act of obedience cleansed the lepers. I want to pray today. For everyone under the sound of my voice, that God 
will release the spirit of obedience to you. You will receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, oh God, that you will help us. In this end time, one of the spirit that is roaming about is the spirit of disobedience especially to parents, spiritual parents, biological parents. And Lord, we are delivered from this spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come against the spirit of rebellion. I come against the spirit of disobedience. I come against the spirit of pride in our lives, in our churches, in the name of Jesus. I pray against the spirit of my children. I pray against the spirit in my congregants. I come against the spirit, Lord, in my practice, in the name of Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that will be humble to do as the Lord has commanded in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says the way cleansed on their way and one of them went, when he saw that he was healed returned with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Where there are not any found who return to give glory to God. Except this foreigner. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He got a completion, a wholeness. After he glorified God. It's also an act of gratitude and humility to give God thanks for that which he has done. When you acknowledge God in little things, the bigger things are going to come. We're talking about leprosy and the bots. There are things God has done in your life before this time. I want you to lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you. Lord, my leprosy is about to be healed, but the ones you have healed already, the ones you have done, Lord, I say thank you. For my life, I say thank you. Lord, for my children, I say thank you. Lord, for my husband, I say thank you, Lord. For this family, Lord, I say thank you, Lord. I thank you for this church, Lord. I thank you for p I thank you for Just Flaky. Lord, I thank you for GLCC. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Father, for, for three weep, oh God, Jehovah. And Lord, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for keeping our going out and our coming. I thank you for divine provision. Lord, I thank you for promotion. I thank you for keeping us alive, oh God, unto this day. Lord, I thank you for our rising and sleeping, oh God. I thank you for our going out and coming in. I thank you for protecting us, oh God, Jehovah. Lord, I give you all the praise. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I glorify you for that which you have done, for what you are doing, for what you will yet do. Lord, we bless you, Lord. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we give you glory. Be thou exalted, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed. And on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you, Lord. And he gave this bread to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body broken for you. And do this in remembrance of me. We partake of your body, O Lord Jesus, today because of the bats. And we pray, Lord, that as we partake of this communion today, you will heal every but in our lives. Every leprosy disguised in the form of lack, in the form of, of, of in, incapability, in the form, Father Lord, of sicknesses and diseases, in the form of alienation, in the form of abandonment, in the form of trauma. We pray that we become whole in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And Lord Jesus, we're doing this remembrance of you. We're taking the blood. The one that you said it was shed on the cross. The one that begins the new covenant. And Lord, this new covenant is a covenant of healing. It's a covenant of deliverance. It's a covenant of prosperity. And Lord, we're asking, oh God, that this covenant, oh God, Lord, be reenacted again in our lives today. I pray, Father, every birth in our lives, in our families, in our homes, in our bodies, in our jobs, in our careers, oh God. Lord, Father, we 
put them to an end today as we take this blood in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you have your oil, we are saying goodbye to every bot in our lives, in our homes, in our jobs, in our finances, in our bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up this oil before your presence, oh God, Lord Jehovah. And I ask, oh God, that your power, Father, Lord, will fall upon this oil, oh God. That as we anoint ourselves, oh God, Jehovah, we are a point of contact to everything that is around us, to everyone that is related and connected to us. That every bot in our lives will receive your judgment today. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. We are taking our formation this morning. Just say this after me. I am a new creation. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. I walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I am emotionally intelligent and I'm becoming a better version of myself. Through a renewed mind, I have the mind of Christ and I understand the things of the spirit. My past is not an obstacle to my future, but a testimony. I am stronger than any challenge. I choose to make the most of every situation or opportunity. I love God. I love myself. I love people. Today is a good day and good things will happen to me, for me, and through me. I am breathing with energy and overflowing with joy. I embrace who I am. I strive to learn with an open and a positive mindset. I am time obedient. I am slow to speak. I'm quick to hear and I'm slow to anger. I walk in love, joy and peace. I am kind and good. I am gentle. I'm faithful and I'm patient. I have self-control. I'm walking in God's purpose for my life. I have an excellent spirit. I am a positive influence. I will commit to smiling today. In Jesus' name, amen. One thing that we do not want to always forget is given. It's always good to know that God is the one that gave us everything we have. And so we would like to show God gratitude by giving to him. And you want to give to P form, please just text G I V E to 855 923 1577. 855 923 1577. If you live in America or you're in, the, in Canada, and if you're in other parts of the world, you can always PayPal, just flick your one at gmail.com. And God, in His infinite mercy, will give seed to the sower, will give bread to the eater. God will increase your seed zone in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm Reverend Olufola K. E. K. I'm the pastor at P Form. If you want to know more about P Form, just go to pform.org. And I want to invite you to our Sunday services at 8502 Cambridge Street, Houston, Texas, 77054. This Sunday is our, our first fruit Sundays. For Sunday, we usually have it immediately after the fast because we're preparing to get into the new year. And the new year, we decree that it's a year of multiplication and God will multiply everything that you have. That is to say, there is something you need to be presenting to God so God can multiply it in the new year. And so we are, you know, ready. The Bible says, I haven't done all, stand. So we're going to give it everything. We've been fasting, we're praying, we're staying on the word of God and we are given and we are given our first fruits 11th of December you can always go through the PayPal thing you want to give God and the prophecy on the first fruit is your first fruit will turn to be your tithe 
eventually. God is going to make that whole thing become a part of what God blesses you with. We've seen this happen again and again and again. And God is faithful. He will do it again. I want to also invite you to our Christmas breakfast service. It's on 25th of December by 11 a.m. Central Time. I, we also have the 31st prayer service. We're praying into the new year by 10 p.m. and we're lighting our candles. We will also be online. And so if you want to be part of it online, by all means, we'll love to have you online as well. I'm praying that God will keep you in the path of his righteousness. I pray that God will cause you to be deeper in the name of Jesus. I want to assure you that God helping me, we are finishing the fast for this year on Saturday, the 10th of December, but we'll still be praying 5.30 a.m. every morning. That's an instruction from God. Just help me, just help me pray and commit me to the hands of God that God will keep me going in the name of Jesus. I say, give one minute every day to me. Pray for me, pray for my husband, pray for my children, pray for our ministry, that God will keep us on a path of righteousness for his name's sake. I love you so much. And I'll be back again at 4 p.m. Central Time. Remain blessed. I thank God because every leprosy has received God's judgment today. Just go give God thanks, show yourself to your priest, and let them rejoice with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have 